and good day, micro friends. So we're cruising along. We're finishing up the stuff that's going to be on check or on exam three. And at the same time, uh, exam two is being graded. We'll talk a little bit more about that as uh, next week goes on. Anyway, um, yeah, we're doing it. So this chapter is covering um, sort of the other routes of bacterial infection. Uh, STDs, UTIs, and then kind of miscellaneous. I think the book, uh, Dr. Palmerville refers to this as sort of surface contact. Um, so it's a, a variety of things, but we're not talking about um, ingestion or puncture wounds <laughs> and you know breaking the skin. Um, so there you go, you gotta figure it out somehow. But some of the stuff, you know, like with STDs, in a real sense, it is contact. Um, you know, it's not so much that it's actually, excuse me, I'm gonna turn my phone off here. Um, there's no um, generally uh, blood transfer. So um, regardless, let's get into it, shall we? Good, so we're gonna start out with sexually transmitted diseases. And um, a couple of things about uh, STDs to pay attention to. The organisms, the bacteria are really fairly delicate guys. They're growing in areas that are fairly moist and uh, they don't survive very well on uh, surfaces and things and they're quite sensitive to desiccation as well. Now, with most STDs, yeah, pretty much most of them, the diseases are pretty subtle and the initial symptoms can be really nothing to being quite mild. Um, they then can have a very slow progression that requires really years to manifest some um, symptoms that then in fact can be incredibly nasty and gross, which we'll look into. So it's actually a little bit of a tricky thing in that you may have um, gotten an infection but actually not show signs of it for quite a while. Um, for most of these bacteria, humans are pretty the only known host. This is a very specific kind of set of pathogens. Uh, so there is a whole range of uh, reasons why sexually transmitted diseases kind of come and go, uh, different sorts of behaviors and things, uh, different kinds of treatments and things like this. So uh, just some recent facts here. This is three years old, but still, uh, chlamydia, um, a 22% increase. Uh, gonorrhea, a 67% increase. Um, syphilis, we'll get into the primary and secondary conditions. Um, not very many cases, but a significant increase. Um, congenital syphilis, that is uh, untreated long term, you gotta be pretty messed up. Um, again, not very many cases, but uh, a pretty high increase in the uh, the, the amounts. So chlamydia is uh, pretty common. Um, gonorrhea, less so. Syphilis, blessedly, is not all that common. So, jumping right into chlamydia, <laughs> whatever. Um, chlamydia uh, trachomatis, and it produces the disease known as chlamydiosis, which is going to result in um, inflammation in the uh, genitourinary tract. So it is a gram-negative, uh, no cell wall. It's actually got a very small genome. Uh, it's another one of these obligate uh, intracellular parasites that we found inside the cells. That um, it can be fairly mild and even untreated. Long term, though, it can begin to scar the reproductive tract um, with both females and males. Uh, you get uh, with females, you can get pelvic inflammatory disease, and so you end up having this buildup of scarring and it can block the fallopian tubes and eventually result in sterilization. Um, infant eyes are particularly sensitive to it and they can be infected at birth. If mom's got um, chlamydia, it is in fact one of the most common uh, causes of blindness and it's actually really easy to prevent a little uh, drop of erythromycin is all you need, and that blocks the bacteria from continuing on. Um, it also can cause pneumonia, but again, treated fairly easily with antibiotics. 
So the chlamydia life cycle is actually a little bit interesting in that there are persistent forms that um, are able to be held in the cells. We've got these different terms called the elementary body and the reticulate body it has to do with uh, actually how they look. And uh, the elementary body is sort of the infectious part that's released. And then um, over time, the reticulate body is what's actually going to be stored. Essentially, you've got the elementary body builds this large sort of um, wall around it, and you have this large, or not a wall, a uh, membrane, and you have a large uh, vesicle inside of it. And these are able to actually begin growing inside another vesicle within the cell. Remember, this is an intracellular uh, bacterium. Uh, another bacterial disease transmitted sexually is uh, Neisseria gonorrhea. And this is, produces the disease known as gonorrhea. A gram negative, um, non modal, uh, no capsule, but it is in fact uh, extracellular. Or it's able to survive extracellularly. We also see some of it actually being taken up by cells. Uh, but it doesn't require to, it's not a uh, obligate uh, cellular parasite. So uh, the symptoms again can be very mild. Uh, there can be um, painful urination or not. Eventually, though, um, I guess in males, so um, that's kind of a, a common symptom of gonorrhea is painful urination but it's not always there. But eventually, you start to get some uh, pretty serious problems. Um, pelvic inflammatory disease, again, can result in infertility, ectopic pregnancies. In infants, uh, again, blinding, the eyes are very sensitive. Silver nitrate drops are what's used to treat that. Uh, with everybody, you can end up with uh, a range of different kinds of infections in the blood and the joints. So it's a, another systemic kind of problem. Um, just some interesting gonorrhea statistics. Uh, looking at states where it is prevalent, I'm not sure what we can take from that, but uh, there you go. And there are some drug resistant trends. Yep. So, uh, there are some standard antibiotics that are used and then we end up with partial resistance that takes actually a longer course. And then there's some that are completely resistant and they require different antibiotics and things. And the rise of full resistant um, antibiotic uh, resistant gonorrhea is absolutely starting to uh, come up. And this is an example now of probably a horizontal gene transfer of a plasmid. And over time, mutations have allowed for the um, successful survival of individuals that can maintain resistance to these different antibiotics. I mean, this is sort of a standard um, curve that we'll see when we start looking at um, a couple other antibiotic resistant bacteria. Syphilis is a gram negative, um, a spirochete, so a cool little spiral shape. Um, you can have it congenitally, that is, you can just be, uh, you know, um, maybe even born with it, but it is primarily transmitted sexually. Um, a large number of individuals infected with it, primarily in developing nations, um, probably brought to Europe um, from the New World by Christopher Columbus. Thank you, Columbus. The first documented cases are not long after they had returned. Um, it is increasing, um, especially among the gay population, the gay males. So. Um, as you can see in this graph here, that the uh, percent of syphilis cases occurring in males is going to be pretty high. Um, most of the, the individuals showing syphilis end up being uh, male. All right, so uh, there you go. Now, syphilis is pretty nasty in that over time it begins to manifest itself as um, some pretty uh, ugly sorts of phenomenon. Primarily, um, syphilis will initially manifest itself as um, an open wound at the point of the initial contact, known as a canker. Uh, 
The bacteria in the wound is infectious, so you can spread it that way, but it does heal in three to six weeks. Now, um, that canker is going to heal. A couple months later, you begin to have flu-like symptoms, um, swollen lymph nodes, rash, uh, something known as the referred to as the pox. Uh, and this can eventually heal in around two months or so. You clear this. But 40% uh, of those go on to what is known as tertiary syphilis. And this is pretty serious in that we end up with these granulomas, these real large uh, enlargements of soft tissue that can then, in fact, uh, begin affecting the brain. And so, or actually, affecting, uh, affecting the bones. Uh, the gomatous destruction of these different tissues and things. You can end up with heart problems, cardiovascular damage, uh, neurological damage is another problem, and uh, this can result in dementia, and which is in fact happening because of the uh, brain atrophy. Uh, so uh, tertiary syphilis often results in people going mad. What a great way. So let's just make a point to treat our syphilis early. Don't let it get this far along. <laughs> God. All right, UTIs. Uh, typically with um, women, men can get UTIs, but not as easily. We can dif distinguish um, the urinary tract into two different regions. We have um, the upper urinary tract, and that is essentially um, from the urethra heading up towards the kidney. So the bladder and the urethra, that is the more specific spot where we can expect infections. So the upper urinary tract is generally sterile. Uh, the urine is fairly toxic at this point. Uh, there's a lot of epithelial sloughing, uh, a lot of movement there. The lower urethra uh, is the place where we can end up having some problems. Uh, one thing is closer to the external environment. And you do have bacteria there, protective flora, but not much. So you can get a, uh, a fairly sterile urine sample by um, what they call midstream collection. So you start peeing for a few moments, wash the stuff out, take the collection, and pretty much, you know, if you don't have a urinary tract infection, there won't be anything growing in it. Um, so the infections have um, a couple of causes. The disruption of the normal flora, which uh, can happen through antibiotics, is going to allow bacteria uh, to get in there and start having some problems, opportunistic bacteria. Uh, STT, STDs also are uh, possible uh, in this way. Let's see, uh, there are a variety then of ways for um, opportunistic infections, primarily in women, um, because of just the plumbing, the proximity of the anus to the urethra and vaginal openings is close. There's, you know, you have a specific directionality in which you wipe. If you don't know about this, ask someone. Uh, there is a lot of bacteria right in that region, and additionally, um, because of the plumbing, women end up having a much shorter urethra. So it's actually a uh, shorter uh, run up to the upper urinary tract. All right, so um, probably half of all women are gonna end up over their lifetime having um, urinary tract infections. It results in a lot of doctor visits. If left untreated, it can start making its way up um, from the uh, bladder into the ureter and then up into the kidney. And that is obviously a much more serious infection um, resulting in hospitalization. So if you've ever had a urinary tract infection, you know what it feels like. It's pretty um, distinctive in that you have painful urination. The urge to pee is kind of always there. You can get a lower backache. Uh, as it begins to manifest itself, you can start to see bacteria in the urine. Um, and it can result in 
um, feeling pretty lousy. You start to get fevers and chills, that's a bad sign. That means that the infection has made its way up into your kidney. See your doctor, get on antibiotics right away. Um, so there are a number of very common infections. Um, the infection of the urethra is common in STDs. Um, also, there's some E. coli that could be present in the feces that can get up in there. Uh, cystitis, which is the disease, the term when it's actually up in the bladder. Again, E. coli. Uh, chlamydia is another good one. Um, it's intracellular, remember, and so it's protected from the urine. And uh, Proteus is a uh, bacterium that actually converts urea found in the urine to ammonia, and that can buffer the urine. Um, let's see. So. Uh, Pyelonephritis, this is now getting to be uh, pretty serious in that you have bacterial infections in the kidneys. And one of the things that's difficult to treat uh, because the continual outflow of urine continually is removing the antibiotics, so um, that can be a bit of an issue. Now, um, so this next set is a bit harder to fit into route of entry. This is what Palmerville refers to as um, surface contact and different kinds of routes. And so we're going to stop here and um, pick up on Friday to finish this one up. So make sure to wash your hands, um, proper hygiene, but not excessively clean. You don't want to remove all your uh, happy flora, but be careful uh, on the toilet. That's all I have to say about that. Hey, guys, um, we'll get exams finished up, graded by this, um, this weekend and have the grades out to you. Thank you very much, and I'll check in with you later. Bye.